I'm a 19-year-old English boy on a gap year. He's doing things that he's never done before. Those sorts of things always stick with you. I might not even return back home. You guys have it good. <laughs>
came out to Mungadels of Jackaroo in I think 2001, 2002 and I knew Mark briefly, played footy with him when I was working on another property in the area. Just a really good, fun bloke, just go-getter, really friendly, enthusiastic, just willing to have, you know, have a crack at anything really. Pom was his, his nickname, yeah, pretty pretty simple but a good one and he, he liked it, he was proud of it. I was born and bred in Hay and, and started Jackaroo myself at, at Mungadale for the Twine and Pastoral Co. And yeah, lucky enough in my time there, Mark arrived and uh, yeah, we grew together from there. In the short time we were there together. A proper bundle of energy. If there was a job there to be done, no hesitation, hop in. First one to hop in, get his hands dirty and be a part of it. No complaining, no whinging, he, yeah, just got the job done. He was very keen to stay. Unfortunately, he had to go home in Port of Call to join the army and, and follow the footsteps of his father and grandfather. He was a military man as well, so um, very focused, very head straight, knew what he was doing. Quite a role model from what I've heard and from what I've seen. Seven Platoon's commander was Lieutenant Mark Everson a rising star in the Welsh Guards. At the time, British forces were overstretched in one of the most dangerous areas of Helmand. He's a fit guy. 007, they called him. To get a radio signal, Everson stepped into the doorway of Compound One. And that's when the burst of uh, about three to five rounds then come through that doorway. He actually just stood, took it as if he was fine, speaking on the radio, until he seen a bit of blood on his hand. He actually realised that he's been shot. His face just went pale. Mark Everson died on May the 12th, 2009, three days after he was wounded. I hope this journal will help to put things in perspective for those back home who want to read it. He's not someone easily forgotten. Very sad to see a young bloke of his character and attributes he had to, to see what happened, yeah. I think his dream was to get back here one day and meet the right one and fulfil his future in Australia, you know, on the land. I only wish I got to meet him, to be honest. It's saddened story so I'm just happy that that we're out well, I'm out here and I'm doing what I can really. Well I crossed paths with the Mark Everson Foundation through some correspondence that came across my desk. We sort of talked and came up with the idea that we could run a program as part of the foundation to get someone out here and part of a Jackaroo exchange program. Just trying to keep that tradition alive of that that generation or the younger person who really wants to get out of the comfort zone, get out of the family home and away from what they're used to and just, you know, doesn't matter where it is in the world, just go out and try something different, challenge yourself and, you know, push new boundaries. It's just, just keeping that alive. It's really great to see young people embrace that adventurous side of things and I think it just, it's such a great lesson in life. Just getting involved in everything, he's always become very involved in the local community. He's already he's playing two codes of football. Yeah, I joined the league team and the local union team, and it's a really big part of really getting invested and in getting into your community. You know, sports is is great, and I love the fact that Australia, especially, takes our sports so so seriously. Just just good to be part of. Good to see these you know, young people who are willing to really challenge themselves and just have a go at anything. They just need to, to, to see if they can actually do it without their phones for a bit or without kind of internet or communication. They put themselves in fairly uncomfortable environments. You know, we go from, you know, mid 40 degrees in summer to, you know, zero degrees, you know, in the winter. You know, we, we get out in the cold and the wet and whatnot, so and they just embrace that and, you know, they do what we do and they just suck it up and, learn from it, it's a good experience. Who says I might not even return back home? Apparently that happens a lot. <laughs> you guys have it good. <laughs> I think opening up the doors
to the young young people is, is, is one of the big ways forward, right? It's the next generation, apparently. <laughs> I'm not sure you want it to be in our hands, but... <laughs> The longer distances seem smaller now. Moving around is just, it's just something you have to do, and you know, long journeys are yeah, they're easy. What you should do is you should get out, you should get out and see everything. You know, there's a big world out there, and I'd have to say something like this. You know, where you got this absolutely amazing sky. You're working kind of on on the land. You know, moving around. You know, it's, it's really something, and it's something you're going to remember. I'm hoping that I'm going to have some great memories of this place when, you know, the rest of my life anyway.